Hi everybody, you're here watching the video called Six Steps to Success. And there's all these questions that come up when someone starts a new instrument for the student as well as the families. What do they need to learn? How, do they, how can they do that? Where do they go for information? And guess what? That all starts here on this website as well as all these videos we have available, but more importantly in the classroom or the music room with your music teacher. So make sure you're listening to the teacher and guess what? They're going to be telling you one thing and guess what it is? Your child's success is 99% predictable good or bad. It's predictable whether they're going to be successful or predictable whether they're not going to be successful. And what does that mean? That if you follow these six steps and your child follows these six steps and does these six steps things or these six things, guess what? There's a 99% chance they're going to do really well. If they choose not to follow these or they go, well, I don't know if I feel like doing that. that. That seems weird. I don't think I need to do that. Then there's a 99% chance that they're not going to be successful on an instrument. So good news, bad news, it's in your court. We're here to help you and this video is here to help you and then don't forget all the other stuff that's there but in, most importantly listen to the teacher talk to the teacher if you have any questions any problems and guess what you're gonna be doing really well we look forward to hearing you play in the future so enjoy this video and start playing every day I'm looking now at the September homework page and it says first thing it says up at the top with a big circle before you begin always wash your hands and rinse your out rinse out your mouth Super important. Uh, first of all, we get stuff on our hands all the time. Our fingers produce oils, and depending on the type of finish on your instrument, that stuff's going to get on the instrument, and it can really hurt your instrument. So we don't want to do that. Uh, so be careful with anything that's, that touches your hands, and I certainly wash my hands soap and water before I begin playing every time. And the other part then, of course, is if I'm going to be blowing into the instrument, guess what? Whatever's in my mouth is also going to be in there. That includes you know, leftover cheese dust from your, uh, you know, your Doritos, or uh, you just now had a, a sucker 30 minutes ago, or whatever it is, all that stuff is going to be in your saliva still. And so it's always important to rinse out your mouth. And so I always tell my students to do it four or five times. If you've been eating anything with color, you keep rinsing out until you don't see that color in the sink when you spit out. Because when you, when you eat Cheetos and you rinse your mouth out, there's still gonna be orange stuff there. So make sure you rinse it out, spit it out. If you still see orange, rinse it out, spit it out, right? So very important thing to take care of the inside of your instrument as well as the outside of your instrument. All right, number one, make a good quality sound on the mouthpiece. I can't make, I can't overstate this. I can't make this a big enough deal. If you can't make the mouthpiece sound good, there's no way you can make the instrument sound good. So don't miss that point. This is huge. So at the beginning, you want to be playing your mouthpiece every day. Uh, very important thing. So we have some reminders here. There's a lip position. We got to get this thing to buzz and then we're going to put the mouthpiece in there. So let's take a look at this. When we're making our, our buzz sound, it's like saying the letter M. M, M, M. And when I do that, I don't do this. I, I call that uh, grandma kisses. We don't want to do grandma kisses. Uh, M. No, we want to pull the corners back. M. All right, this is like rubber bands here. And we want to pull the corners back and keep it nice and firm. The inside of our lips here in the middle, not the outside, but the middle of our lips, we will spend some time where we'll actually loosen this to make the notes go lower or tighten it to make it go higher as we're trying to make that air speed goes through there. But for right now, think about M, corners pulled back, and then we're pressing our lips together and we're then trying to then blow air through that and it's gonna make a little buzz sound. So uh, the saying the letter M is our position. To make the buzz sound, we're actually gonna lick our lips and we're going to press those lips together pressing them together this way while we're pulling back, and then we should be able to get a sound. Yeah? All right, so if we do too big, it's not, not good. We need muscles here. Interestingly, all these muscles are very, very, very firm, except the middle, not quite so firm because that's what needs to be moving. But we don't need the whole lips. We don't do that, okay? Corners back, in, uh, lick your lips, press them together. Now, you're probably not going to be able to do this on your own without your mouthpiece for a while, but that's what we're trying to do is get that sound. Sing the letter M, tighten up, lick your lips, blow. Keep the lips tight. Then we're just going to put the mouthpiece. Now, when we put the mouthpiece, interesting, there's a lot of space to put that mouthpiece on. So for at the beginning, it kind of depends on how your teeth are shaped and some different things, but you're going to want to go somewhere in the middle of the mouthpiece. Uh, probably a little more on the top, but somewhere in the middle to the top. And then we're going to be doing the exact same thing, but we're going to be pressing in to seal off so there's no air leak that comes around. Okay? So lick your lips, M, corners back, nice and firm. 
whistle, right? And then we can make different sounds. The fun thing about brass instruments like the trumpet or the trombone is that we can actually make different sounds. Right? And so we can do sounds like what would, I just kind of did a little bit of a siren sound. You can actually play notes. And so getting, spending time on this is the most important thing you can do on those first weeks of learning to play an instrument. You get good at this, and then when we put the instrument together, it's gonna sound good. All right, um, number two, assemble your instrument. Um, again, there's different ways, and your teacher will help you with this as well, but let's just quickly go through this. The main thing about the trombone is, the trombone is actually long. It's very long. And so it's tempting to want to turn it sideways and put it together while we're looking at it. This is a bad idea. You can hit it, do different things, that's not a good idea. So everything we're going to do with the trombone is going to be up and down. That way it's not hitting anybody else, it's not hitting, uh, you're not hitting your instrument, you're not hitting someone else's instrument, or someone else getting hit in the face with this, right? So what I always talk is, if you take a look here, one of these tubes is a little bit longer. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right hand, right? I'm going to take my right hand, and I'm just actually balancing it right here on my right hand. Can you see that? I've turned this way. Balancing on my right hand with the tall part inside, tall part toward my body, okay? All right, so here I have, I'm just balancing it here, right? Just balancing it here, holding it there, and so it's going straight up and down, not hitting anybody. Now, the other part is the bell assembly. And the bell assembly, I'm going to grab right here, and I'm going to then take the tall part and put this on top of the tall part, all right? So it fits right inside, okay? Now, this is not the correct lineup yet, but that's how it, it fits together. Now, at that point, I'm going to try to turn this into a letter L. I'm going to try to show you this. It's kind of hard to see this way. Maybe I could turn it this way. And I'm trying to turn this into a letter L. So it goes down like a capital L and goes over like that. So when I put it on, I'm actually going to turn it so it looks kind of like a capital L when I lift it up to my face. Does that make sense? All right. So I've got the capital L thing going on, but I'm just going to do it while I'm sitting down like this. So I've got the capital L. And then there's a thumb screw where I can just tighten this, the two pieces together. And it doesn't have to be super tight because if it moves, you can always move it back. It's not a big problem that way. Now, the position is a capital L, but as you're smaller and you have smaller hands, you may, instead of doing just a capital L, you may actually want to go a little bit further over because your hand's going to hold both sides of this. So when you do that, the main thing is don't let the bell touch the slide. You don't want it to actually hit this or hit it with your hand. So you want to keep it up enough so that you can do that. So in my case, I'm going to have it there where there's about maybe an inch, an inch between the bell and the slide, okay? What we call the hand slide. All right, now. What I'm going to do is, the important part is, putting it together, that's real easy. I balance it, I'm doing everything up and down, slide the bell assembly on, tighten it there, adjust it just a little bit, and then tighten it. And then I'm ready to, to learn my actual, oh, let me make sure I'm not skipping some things. Oh, caution, never let your slide touch the ground. I'm not going to set my slide and stand on the ground like this, uh, my slide and my bell assembly on the ground while putting weight. Those long tubes, these long tubes are not super strong. And so when you set it on the ground, it's gonna actually want them to press out there and then it's not gonna move like it's supposed to keep moving there. So never put that on the ground. When I'm resting it here, I'm gonna rest it on my leg so it never, the slide never touches the ground. Most trombones have a little rubber tip on the end. Well, that's in case you hit something, but you should not hit that, that you should never use that rubber tip. Never let that go down. Uh, number two, the mouthpiece can get stuck easily. Oh yeah, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, remember to balance the slide up and down, let your left hand put the bell portion on, then hand tighten. Uh, that's all good. And then, all right, so now we're ready to put the mouthpiece in. And on the mouthpiece, we're going to then just, look at this, we're just going to set it in. Boom, there it is. We don't have to push it in or shove it in or hit it in. It makes this, this kind of cool sound. Yeah, but it's not a good idea because if you hit it too hard, it's going to get stuck in there and then that can hurt the mouthpiece and it can also make what we call here the receiver here. It can actually spread that out and cause problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that mouthpiece in and it's good to go. We don't have to push it in or twist it or anything. That's great. Okay. All right. So now our instrument is assembled. Um, and let's take a look at playing and resting positions. All right. So first of all, playing position, the biggest trick is your left hand. Your left hand has to have, has to be the holding mechanism for this whole thing. And it's part balance, and it's part balance this way, and it's part balance 
this way, and it's just a little bit funky. So let me just give you a couple things. The crossbar on the bell, this one right here, this crossbar on the bell, your thumb is going to go there. Not your whole thumb, but just the, the top part, the last knuckle of your thumb. Then your other fingers are going to come to the slide portion here, and they're going to hold there. So between your thumb and the fingers, they're going to be, that's going to be your holding mechanism and our balance mechanism, and then our right hand is going to move the slide. Okay? This is tricky. This is going to take a little time for you to figure out, but just remember, left thumb goes on the bell, and the left fingers go on the slide, and that's going to be our balance. Now, if you have trouble holding it, because it's a little heavy at the beginning, especially if you're on the smaller side, don't be afraid to take like this first finger here and put it up by the mouthpiece to help push and hold there. All right? Anything you can do to hold this in place, again, this is just the holding hand. Whatever is comfortable for your hand and helps you do that is probably a good idea. You can always double check with your teacher. Now your left hand, I'm sorry, your right hand now is going to be what is going to move the slide. So if we take a look at this, uh, first of all, you should know that there is a what we call a slide lock. And it's this little thing that twists and there's a little place that it can hold under there and it's actually holding it in place. Great. Slide locks are awesome. Keep it from falling and hurting. But when it's time to play, we need to undo the slide lock, but we don't want it to fall. So I actually take my pinky, right? I take my pinky and I put it underneath that bottom slide there. Uh, the bottom crossbar here, and then I undo that. So now the slide's ready to move, but I'm holding it there with my pinky, okay? So my playing position is going to be what I call fingertips. Now I'm not talking fingertips this way, but fingertips like this. We don't want the whole hand grabbing this. And I'm actually just going to use the fingertips. Oh, that's a bad way to see that. I don't know if you can see it better this way. I got my fingertips here, but nothing's grabbing. It's just my fingertips so that I'm going to be able to move this. Okay? So my playing position would be something like this, and I've got my fingertips, and then I'm able to move to my positions very easily. Okay? So I can reach my full arm out. I could actually move just a wrist motion here, but it's going to be fingertips only holding that position. And then when I'm done, I put my pinky underneath that, put the slide lock on, and I'm ready to go to rest position. So playing position, we're going to sit up tall, and when we're ready to play, and I'm going to undo the slide lock, and I've got my fingertips here, and I'm ready to play. Boom, we play our note, or whatever notes we're going to play. And then when we're done, resting position, um, I usually put the slide lock on pretty much every time I'm putting my instrument down, but you don't, uh, it depends. Sometimes you're just gonna grab with your pinky. Anyway, I'm gonna put it straight down so it rests on, the bell is resting on my leg to protect the bell, and it's also uh, leaning against my shoulder, and so my arms are not having to hold the weight anymore because it's, it's still pretty heavy. It's probably about a gallon of milk kind of heavy. Sometimes when it's really full, it's kind of hard to, to hold that, and this is kind of the same weight. So down is going to be nice and easy, rest. My arms are resting here, and my back is resting, right? So I'm very comfortable. When it comes time to play, I'm going to put my pinky under, undo this, and I'm going to sit up tall, feet flat, and I'm ready to play in what I call playing position. I got my fingertips and I'm ready to play and my back is not touching the chair. And then when it's time to, when I'm done, I put my pinky under, slide lock, down, rest. Yeah, rest position is to rest. It's hard to sit up and hold these big instruments, especially when you're, you're younger and smaller. So do that and that's gonna be your playing and resting position. Your first three notes, the tricky thing on the trombone is, is just this long slide, and it seems like there's no real places to, to do that. And it's partially true, because eventually as you get older, you're going to use your ear to know where you're in the exact right spot. But we can give you some guidelines. We're going to give you some guidelines. So your first three notes are a D. Uh, oh, by the way, we haven't talked about this yet. Um, you're going to be learning a, a new clef. Uh, last year, you probably learned treble clef when you learned to play the recorder. This year, you're going to learn something called bass clef. And so it looks like a backward C with two dots. And those two dots are around the, a line that's for the F, the note F. So sometimes it's called an F clef. Uh, but anyway, so we've got a, a, a bass clef. So you have to learn to read some new notes. No big deal. Last year, you learned every good boy does fine and F-A-C-E for the spaces. This year, we're going to give you two new things to say. For the lines, we're going to say good boys do fine always. And for the spaces, all cows eat grass, and we're going to use the first letters of those, right? So if I look at this, line notes, uh, in this case, it's a line note, third line, good boys do fine always, good boys do. So I know that's a D. The second note on number two is a space note. So for spaces, say all cows eat grass, A-C-E-G. By the way, if you don't remember this, look over on the back side. There is uh, all this stuff down here, but the five-note scale is going to, to, um, uh, to have all this reminders for you. So C 
And then the last one is a second line, Every, I'm sorry, good boys. So that's gonna be a B, or in this case, a B flat. And there's your first three notes. So what positions? Well, for a D, we're gonna do something we call fourth positions. We actually have seven, seven positions on our trombone. And all the way in is first position, okay? And if you went all the way out, like my full arm out, this is seventh position. For most of you, your full arm out is going to be about here, and that's sixth position, okay? So all the way in, first, full arm, six, full arm, six, and then we have one more for fourth position. Now, if you take a look where the top of your uh, hand slide is, and if it's right there where it's right about where the bell is, a little bit below there, a little bit of silver below that is gonna be what we call fourth position. So this is fourth position, and then we're gonna have third position, and we're gonna have second position and first. But right now, a D is D4, D fourth position. What's fourth position? A little silver below the bell, and that means I'm in fourth position. D4, C6, full arm six. Now in your case, full arm, my arm is a little bit longer, so I, 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 I would actually do it a little different. C6, and then B flat is one. So you gotta just learn those three, all the way in, all the way out, and then somewhere in the middle, a little bit of, of slide showing here below the bell is your fourth position, okay? So that's your first three notes. Uh, let's review so far, washing our hands and our mouth, uh, good quality sound on the mouthpiece, still the most important thing at the beginning. Oh, it's so important, we're gonna be doing this in band a lot. Uh, you get good at that, it's gonna make your instrument sound good. Uh, two, assemble your instrument, we talked about that, always up and down, uh, holding it there and balancing there, never shove your mouthpiece in. Uh, number three, playing in resting positions, we showed you that, and uh, very important to know where that the left thumb is on the bell, the left fingers are on the slide, and that's just a little, it just takes some time. But guess what, in about a week, super easy. Just takes a little time. Um, and then we had our first three notes, D4, C6, B flat one. And then lastly, are the, then we have number five. Now number five is actually a little further down the road. It's gonna be more what we're gonna be doing in October and November and December, really working on those, particularly October, November. And we, it's called tonguing. When we start talking about tonguing, we're start make, talking about how do we make the notes sound good when we're starting a note. Usually when we start notes, we use our breath. <laughs> Which is fine at the beginning, but eventually when we start playing songs, that's not going to sound good. It's not going to sound good to do that way. So we start, we're going to start using our tongue to start the notes, and we call it tonguing. And what do we do with that? We have to do two things, and it's weird because our body doesn't, it's something that it's never done before. It's really not that hard, but our body's going, this is really feels strange. So it's okay. If you do it right, it's going to, at the beginning, it's going to feel like you're kind of swallowing your tongue you're doing it right, okay, okay? So if you'll do this and follow what we tell you to do, it's gonna make you sound so much better, and we call it tonguing. So what happens? Two parts. One, we're gonna make the shortest T possible, and we're literally gonna say in our mouth, T, 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 T. The second part is we're gonna keep blowing while we do that, and that's the weird part. It's, it's very natural to do T, T, T. That makes sense. That makes sense, but when you try to do them together, it's gonna feel really weird. You gotta keep blowing while you make those T sounds. Other than that, we go and we don't wanna do that. So it's a weird trick called tonguing, but it's the difference between sounding like a beginner and sounding like a really good musician. And you'll be surprised, even at, in December and January when we do our first concerts, most people are gonna think you sound really good just because you can play your notes and you use the tongue and all this, these th uh, six things we're talking about right here, okay? They're gonna make you sound like a real musician, not just a beginner. Okay, so notice that it says, uh, don't worry about this until we get to song number 15. And again, that's gonna be weeks down the road. But I just want you to know, these are the things that you're gonna need to learn how to do to be a good musician, right? All right, uh, last thing, let's take a look at number six and it just says repetition. Repetition makes perfect sense in some things. Um, by the way, here's another rest position. I put my slide lock on, I wrap my arm around here, and so I'm nice and comfortable here. Um, anyway, when it comes to repetition, if you're in sports, or you're in, mu in uh, dance, or you're in gymnastics, or you're in uh, martial arts, 
it's all about repetition. What does repetition do? It's what we call muscle memory. When a, when a baby begins walking, they don't know what to do. Their muscles don't, so they're, they're trying to figure it out. They do it over and over and over, and finally, their muscles start doing some of this stuff on their own without them having to actually think about it, okay? And so we're gonna do the same thing. You do the same thing when you learn to walk. You do the same thing when you learn to throw a ball. You do the same thing when you learn a cartwheel. You do the same thing when you learn a pirouette. And guess what? We're gonna do the same thing when we're learning this uh, type of skill. All these things we're gonna be doing, eventually you're not gonna think about them at all. But how do we do that? That's, by the way, that's all called muscle memory, where the muscles remember what to do without you having to think and, and tell them what to do. And how do we get muscle memory? By repetition. It's just a matter of a number of times. I always, uh, at the beginning of the, the year, I always get new students and they, you know, they'll, they'll be frustrated about something. Oh, I couldn't play this. And I'll say, my first question almost always is going to be, how many times did you do it? And they'll say, three. And I laugh because, you know, we all know you can't learn how to do a cartwheel with three tries. It takes over and over and over and you fall and you get up and do it again and fall and you get up and do it again and fall. Eventually you can get those things under control. Uh, so you got to train the muscles. How do you train the muscles? Repetition. Repetition. So we're going to try to teach your kids to, to be thinking about it's a bunch of numbers I've got to do. It's a numbers game. If I do it enough times, it's going to be easy. Everything's hard before it's easy. Um, so in this case, I'll tell students, if, when you can play a song 25 times, uh, when you can play a song and then play it 25 times, you're going to be really good at that song. And then if you played it 50 times, it's going to be super easy. You could do it while you're falling asleep. Does that make sense? It's a super easy thing to do. So this repetition thing, it's all about repetition. So you'll notice on all of our homework sheets, we have something called tally marks or tally counts. And it's just good for students to keep track of that because sometimes they get frustrated and then I'll say how many times? Six. Well, six is just not enough times. For most of you, when you get to 10 or 15, you're going to be doing pretty good. You get to 25, it's going to be doing really good. You get to 50, it's going to be super easy. So it's just a number of time. So you think about uh, like song number one. Well, the first time you do it, it's not going to be pretty and it's not going to sound good and it's not going to feel good and you're not going to be comfortable doing it. By number five, it's getting better. By 10, okay, I'm starting to remember this. By 20, it's starting to get really good and easy. So it's, it's all a numbers game and it's all about repetition. Don't miss that point. And um, don't get frustrated. If you haven't done the, the number of repetitions, then of course it's not going to be easy for you. The only thing I add to that is correct repetition. If you do something wrong over and over and over, you're still going to get bad results and we don't want that, right? So correct repetition is the last thing. So quick review, washing your hands, rinsing out your mouth before you play, making good quality sound on your mouthpiece with the M and the buzz, and then assembling your instrument correctly, learning and playing your resting position, learning your first three notes, uh, and then on the back you'll see we're doing the five note scale, the first five notes. Then we'll start working on tonguing, making sure our notes sound good, and when we're changing notes in between notes, we're going to use our tongue to change those notes. And then number six, correct repetition or learning muscle memory. If you do those six things, you're going to be doing really well. So listen to your teacher, ask your teacher questions, and look at all these videos. We have a bunch of videos on this page that you can look at uh, that are going to be very helpful. Ask questions if you need help. But if you're doing these things uh, and you do a number of repetitions, you're going to be fine. All right? Uh, all right, so that should be it. Uh, be, you'll be starting to, to look for about 20 minutes a day of practicing. At the beginning, you won't be able to do 20 minutes just because it's just, it doesn't, I mean, if you play one, two, three, and four, songs one, two, three, and four, five times each, it's only going to take you like, you know, five minutes. It's not going to take very long. So it's going to take a while before you've learned enough to be able to play that many songs. But we're going to start, and then we're going to work our way up to about 20, 25 minutes a day, and you'll be doing really good. All right. Good luck to you. Ask lots of questions. We look forward to seeing you playing down the road, not only in fifth grade, but sixth grade and middle school and high school. All right. Have a great day.